Because I happen to believe that Henry Kissinger was one of the most destructive secretaries of state in the modern history of this country. I am proud to say that Henry Kissinger is not my friend. I will not take advice from Henry Kissinger. And in fact, Kissinger's actions in Cambodia, when the United States bombed that country over through Prince Sihanouk, created the instability for Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge to come in, who then butchered some three million innocent people, one of the worst genocides in the history of the world. While things are stable in Cambodia, next door in Vietnam, trouble is brewing. And by 1965, a bloody war is raging. Hundreds of thousands of American soldiers are fighting the Viet Cong guerrillas and North Vietnamese troops. Sihanouk, powerless to prevent it, lets the North Vietnamese funnel weapons and supplies through the eastern part of his country along a route that is known as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. In much the same way, he turns a blind eye to American B-52s bombing the trail. With China and Russia on one side supporting North Vietnam and the US and its allies on the other, Sihanouk, desperate to keep Cambodia neutral, performs a high-wire act, hoping he can play enemies against each other. Ultimately, the U.S. secretly bombs Cambodia, sweeping all the way to the Thai border and killing hundreds of thousands of civilians. There is absolutely no doubt that the bombing of Cambodia uh, by the United States inflicted severe damage on the country, that these were often bombings at very high altitude without much intelligence about any specific targets, and many civilians suffered. This was, almost all of the experts say, a huge boon to the Khmer Rouge in their recruitment. I don't think there's any question that the bombing did contribute to the Khmer Rouge's rise to power. The war of the Khmer Rouge, here, it involves American war in South Vietnam. So it was a result of the war. Yes, yes. And so you Americans, you must know what happened already. Well, we had a secret war in Laos and Cambodia. Oh, right? yes, yes. And also the bomb and just, uh, you know, for, uh, under the president nations and the foreign minister, Henry Kissinger, yeah. they bomb in the country and also along the Ho Chi Minh Trail, 2.7 million tons of the Bay 52. Cambodia in the early 1970s figured very prominently in U.S. politics, although we forget about that. The Kent State Massacre, for example, had to do with protests against not the war in Vietnam, but the U.S. incursion into Cambodia. The first articles of impeachment drawn against Richard Nixon had to do with the secret bombing of Cambodia, not with Watergate. So this is a country that for a brief time figured very prominently in U.S. politics. It was Nixon's view, Nixon and Kissinger, there was one word that they put a lot of weight on, that's brutality. You're dealing with people and you have to be brutal in your use of power. The mistake was linking Cambodia to Vietnam. That was Kissinger who said it in the message, we link the two. The bombing was supported as a brutally necessary way of maintaining the credibility of the United States, which was still in the midst of the Cold War. Seeing he's losing control of his country, Sihanouk breaks off relations with the U.S. and turns to China and the Soviet Union for aid. This is a game changer for the United States. While Sihanouk is visiting France, his second in command, General Lon No, apparently with CIA help, cuts the wire and the king falls. We believe that it was the CIA had uh, concocted this uh, coup against uh, King Sian, uh, Prince Sihanouk, the chief of state. And it was in 1918, March 1970. And then we have General Long Nol, who's a strong man for the Americans. The problem with Lan Nol is although he was initially appeared to be pliable, he was actually 
kind of crazy. He was into astrology. He was a terrible leader. There was an incredible amount of corruption, massive amounts of U.S. military aid were just being stolen by his forces. Immediately upon seizing power, Longnall is faced with a revolution in the countryside instigated by the Khmer Rouge and its leader, Pol Pot. Pol Pot, his real name is Salat Sar. He actually grew up in the royal palace where his uncle was an employee. Because of that connection, he actually managed to get a government scholarship to go to Paris to study. And he was convinced that Marxism-Leninism was uh, the salvation to Cambodia, which was a feudal state in his view, run by a monarch. Prince Sihanouk was a leftist monarch. This was problematic for the Cambodian communists because essentially they had to move farther, farther to the left to criticize him. Um, and he was essentially stealing their thunder to the point where in the early 1960s, uh, he made things so difficult for them that they fled to the countryside and lived among the hill tribes. These were really, really difficult conditions in the 10 years or so that uh, Pol Pot and his followers lived up there. Simplicity and starkness, um, the lack of a gray area, the lack of compromise, they really became extremists in the literal sense of the word during that time. Now, they might have very much kind of been snuffed out and, and left as a footnote in history had it not been for the March 1970 coup that toppled Norodom Sihanouk. The Cambodians believed in Sihanouk. That was the right approach. They wanted to be Cambodian, Khmers, and they were not interested in replacing French colonialism with American colonialism. The United States did not understand. We still thought that what we have to offer is democracy, is something good for them, but you have to have the other side agreeing they saw it completely differently. The key development is when Prince Norodom Sihanouk was overthrown in a right-wing coup in 1970, and then essentially switched sides and started supporting the Khmer Rouge. Sihanouk watches from his exile in China and thinks he sees his chance to return to power. In a pivotal move, he goes on the radio and calls upon all Cambodians to join the very guerrillas he was once fighting, the Khmer Rouge. This will change the destiny of Cambodia. On April 17, 1975, the Khmer Rouge enter Phnom Penh to cheering crowds. The civil war is over and peace has finally come, they think. And that is really the point at which the Khmer Rouge becomes a serious political force. And I think Sihanouk's involvement and his backing of that movement led to tens of thousands of people in the countryside where he was revered as a god king to join and oppose the government in Phnom Penh. Yeah, there were two reasons for me to join. Two reasons for me to join. One is I... ហើយខ្ញុំចំតោះដៃខាតនឹងការធ្វើ the Khmer Rouge won the war, and everybody thought that, well, the war is finished. So we were happy, no more fighting. But, well, it turned to be worst case scenario. When I had to leave, as I left, I took the flag of the ambassador. I didn't want people to desecrate the American flag. I was weeping 
leaving the country behind without any kind of controlled solution. We had given the impression that we were going to go and help them and not walk out. And there, after all these promises we had made, we just walked out. <laughs> 